<clears throat> All right, today we're going to talk about something that uh, not just old men do. <laughs> well, that's kind of what old men are known for doing, right? <laughs> I want to talk about venting today, and it's really kind of a simple subject. Uh, not a whole lot to talk about. Venting is sort of just letting gas out of the mold as, as metal comes in to the, and starts filling the mold. If there were no way for that gas to get out, it would eventually pressurize and we would the metal would stop filling the mold, right? It would, it, the gas wouldn't allow it to fill. However, we have, we use stuff like, uh, grab it here sand right to make our molds sand is not a non-permeable substance gas can escape through sand uh, you will see guys that uh, quite frankly don't need to ever put vents in their sand because they have sand that is at the consistency that they need it to be that ga enough the gas can just get out um, i get it my sand is actually pretty darn close to that at this point when i was doing petrobond uh, I found the need to vent much, much higher than I do today. Now I can get away with it. I can forget to put a vent in and actually um, and have it work. But as I was thinking about this, um, you know, there's really no right or wrong way to vent. I mean, I guess there is, right? You wouldn't, you wouldn't vent behind the direction the metal is flowing, right? You want to you make sure your vent is on the other side of your mold from where the metal is coming in. But beyond that, I'm not sure that there's really a right or wrong way. There are better ways to do it than, some ways are better than others, let's put it that way, right? And I have done some not so good ways. And I'm gonna show you a couple of clips here in just a second of previous castings that I did uh, and venting that wasn't great. So let's tell you what, let's just look at those and it works, but we're gonna show you a better way. Now, let me just start off by saying, <laughs> I can't tell you how much I hate this video. This is an early video of mine. I cast a 3 8 inch aluminum rod. Uh, I really should pull it down because it just I just cringe every time I watch it, the stupid things I talk about here. Uh, you can see what I'm about to use for a sprue and for a vent. I'm going to put the vent over here on this side. A uh, piece of half inch PVC. It's a huge thing. And we're going to put the same thing in for a sprue. Oh, God. Right here, I'm gonna, I gotta talk about this. I make a comment in this video about how I've learned that I don't have to have a clean top to my mold. Gah! All right, here I am cutting runners, uh, gates. I guess they're, run, they're runners, but I call them gates. Oh, yeah, yeah. Directly from the sprue to the part. Cutting a big basin at the bottom of my sprue. Ugh. Don't do any of these things. All right, as bad as that was, I'm going to now cut a, um, a gate. I guess a gate. I don't know what's coming out of the part. A gate from the part to a to my vent. Uh, again, it's huge. It's just going to be stuff I'm going to have to deal with. I even cut a stupid basin here too. Oh, man. And here comes the part out of the sand. Um, you, you can see there, I, just huge things I got to cut off the end of that, that rod to make it useful. So, not a great way of doing it. Not a great way of doing it. All right, so moving on to the next clip here. Um, this one I'm classing a plaque for... Uh, uh, son of a friend of mine and don't let these straws fool you i'm going to use straws here uh, as vents to the surface but um, trust me i am going to still screw it up and make it horrible to clean up and i'm going to show you this real quick here just because we're going to talk about them next week i'm actually cutting in what's called a blind feeder here that is a feeder that doesn't come to the surface and you can't see it this was pointless. <laughs> we'll talk about that next week. And I'm cutting two 
massive gates into the cope of this mold. So, which is okay, great. I'm pouring into the cope, but now it's going to come over the top of the mold and fall down into the mold from that. Uh, and they're huge and uh, bad, but here we're it's going to get better here in just a sec. So I decided to cut this the vents these gates out to the vent um, the same way cut them on the back side of the uh, of the the mold or the pattern here so now I'm going to have these two huge lumps on the back side of my uh, my part that I'm going to have to deal with I can't just cut them off I've got to have to grind them down and get them flat I did at least cut them a little smaller but <sighs> silliness just silliness. And here you can see them, right? There they are right there. There's just big lumps on the back of my plaque that I'm going to have to deal with and clean up. The gas vented just fine, but at what expense? All right, so <laughs> big old fat vents. Big old fat vents, right? <laughs> this is actually a pretty good example. I was cleaning my garage yesterday, and um, I ran across this guy. This is a part that I made some time ago. And I can see here, on the back side, I don't know if I can, let me freeze frame here, let me let me zoom in. All right, you see that? It's right here and right here. I don't remember which one was the in, which one was the out. I have no idea. But this is not great because I got this big blob I got to cut off now. And why give your, why go through all that extra work when you don't have to? So let me back up. I'm going to show you a couple of new ways, and I've got a couple of clips that I just recorded just the other day. Um, two two processes uh, that I'm using now that really work quite well, right? Uh, scratch vents, and then I'm going to do a wire kind of, I don't know what you call them, wire poke, poking a wire down through it, wire poke. Um, both those techniques I'm going to show you in these next couple, these, these two clips showing coming up. There's what the pores are. And then we'll come back and uh, yeah, we'll close it out. All right, so I've already got the uh, uh, the drag rammed up. I've got sand underneath this uh, the heart. So we're just going to go ahead and ram up the uh, the cope just like we normally would. Here is my um, my vent, <laughs> a little piece of 14 gauge uh, copper wire. If I were uh, if I were a big stack D, you'd see me pulling it out of my walls so <laughs> to melt melt it. And all we're going to do here is I'm just going to poke this down. The pattern is still in there. I'm just going to poke it down until it touches the pattern. I'm not going to go hard. I'm just going to touch it. I know a lot of guys would measure, you know, the depth of the pattern, and they would use their hand to kind of make sure they don't touch the pattern. I didn't do that. It's probably a better technique, but I didn't do it. But anyway, my pattern is right about here. I'm just going to put, like, that's how deep. I could actually measure that, right? That's touch that that's how deep I am in the mold. So we can just come we'll come a little shallower. And I gotta tell you, I don't know how many of these to put in. I don't think it's gonna be a problem that I'm putting in a number of them. But that's it. That's how we're gonna vent uh, with that wire through the through the mold. So let's go ahead and I'll get it opened up, cleaned out. And we'll pour it and see how it turns out. All right, I was hoping for like great wafts of steam to come up through these vents when I pour, but really not. It's pretty quiet, pretty easy, nice, clean pour. Nothing exciting. All right, so I forgot to take picture video of the coming out of the box, but here is the back side of the heart. A um, couple pictures of it. And it uh, turned out nice and clean, no marks from the vents. Good enough to say happy birthday, Mom. Okay, we're going to do scratch vents in this part, and we're going to put them on the opposite side of where the metal is coming, and the metal is going to come into the gate. Then we're going to push the gas out through the corners here. And we're just cutting little lines, I mean, tiny little fine lines in the sand to let the gas escape. That's all there is to it. And really nothing to show here, just a nice clean pour. Letting that basin get a little low. All right, here we go. We're going to open it up, and I'm going to stop it here in just a sec. 
um, when we look at the mold. And there it is. You can see the scratch fence. Nothing is in them. Not even charred. They're they're nice and clean. Nothing came out but gas. Uh, now I'm going to stop it again. Look at the little two little nubs on the corners of the mold, the part. That's all the metal that flowed into the vent. Easy to clean up. Easy, easy. Okay, so there you go. I mean, you can do them this way. You can make big old fat vents. I used to make vents with these kind of things right you don't really need that much vent i mean we're only talking about a little bit of gas that's got to get out that's why the the poking wire pokes work really well uh you why the scratch vents work really really well um they're so much easier to clean up so much easier to clean up this is probably why this one's still sitting here like this right what a pain i mean I gotta, not only do i have to cut the edge smooth which wouldn't be a big deal but now i gotta Basically, I got to plane the whole back side to make it make your life easier. Look at doing things like the pokes. Look at thing wire poke. Look at things that like scratch vents. Um, your vents don't have to be huge for the parts we're doing. The vents don't have to be huge. And keep in mind, your sand is semi permeable, right? It's, some gas is going to come out through the sand. So hopefully that was helpful to you. Hopefully that was uh, will make your life easier as you go forward. Um, save you some save you some effort. You guys have a great day.